So what what took you to a place where you decided to use the drugs? Oh, I fell into it, it was just partying, you know, okay, I'm gonna party with them, you know, we're gonna party and then it just escalated. Mm -hmm. It just escalated. I don't know how, how it happened, yeah. but it happened. And it happened, it happened for two years. Every day, every day, every day. Mm -hmm. Became the person that I, hate, that I hated. That I, that I always looked at, I became that person. Mm -hmm. And it was every day I started losing. I lost cars, I lost houses, I lost friends, I lost family, I lost businesses, I lost it all. And how did your mom and your father, you know what I mean, feel about you, you know what I mean, entering in that world when you wasn't raised in that world? Well, they, well, my mom, my dad, my, my mom and dad both drank. They both died from cirrhosis, ironically. So I really don't, my dad died when I was, well, my mom died when I was 20, 21 from drinking. My dad died 10 years later from drinking. And so there I was, turned into that person that I hated. I started drinking, 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 drugging, 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 drugging. So I don't know, they weren't really a, I really didn't get a chance to, because at that time I was, I was in drug and do state. Yeah. So when, when did you start actually, you know what I mean, getting into the drug game? Was, was, was they alive, you know what I mean, when you was doing it or you started doing it after they passed away? Oh, it was after. Okay. It was after. Maybe part of the depression. Okay. Part of not wanting to feel. Part a lot of that. I didn't have nobody to turn to. Mm -hmm. Those were my people that I turned to. When mm -hmm. you know, when you lose your parents, who do you turn to? I was that person. Mm -hmm. My brothers. I was. My mom and dad. When they passed away, they said, you know, take care of the family. <laughs> and there I was taking mm -hmm. care of the family. You know, I at in my early twenties. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot, of, I, a lot of weight on me. Looking back at it now, a lot of weight on me. I didn't really get the chance to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Even I went, I did so much. I've been a lot of places, a lot of places I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. So going back when you first started, you know, um, entering that world, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you see yourself, you know, progressive in that type of world? Or did you see yourself, you know, uh, was going to end up, you know what I mean, losing your life as far as, you know what I mean, through violence or through, you know what I mean, the jail system? I mean, how did you see yourself? Oh, I was progressing. I met a lot of, a lot of, a lot of high people. Yeah. Very high people. And... Like I said, it was scary. Because you know. there's times you didn't know if he was coming back or not for every mistake that you know that you would have made. And it's all about greed. And as you get higher and higher, you meet the higher you meet higher people, you meet higher people, and you're like, oh cool, cool, you know, you don't have to go through these people no more. I'm going straight to the I'm straight going to the source. Yeah. You know, and then it's just like the greed, it's just like it just keeps coming in and coming in. And then, you know, went to jail, prison, I think three times, five different prisons. Yeah, in and out of jail. Like I said, been kidnapped, shot at, and still kept going. Mm -hmm. So tell me about their experience, you know what I mean, being kidnapped and, you know what I mean, um, how was that, you know what I mean? Did you see, you know, uh, 
your life ending at that particular time? You know, even after they, at, at the time when it happened, they came to my dad's store, it was seven o'clock in the morning. Same people, this is the greed, same people that they knew how much I had and what I had, same people that I was dealing with are the same people that came from behind. And it was their re relatives that came because they knew what I had. Mm -hmm. And it was seven o'clock in the morning, came to my dad's store, had us all on the floor. My dad, a couple of his friends, <laughs> seven o'clock in the morning at our store. Uh, pistol whooped me in front, of my, in front of my dad. And then they, they we didn't give him nothing. And it was like six of them. They threw me in a truck. We drove around South Bend for like about a half hour, 45 minutes. They even took me to my apartment. And they made me go into my apartment and search my apartment. And they found a little bit in there. And they said they, I, they wanted the money. And they came out with exactly how much I knew, they knew I had. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was them, and they were even ski masked. We, they took me all the way to Chicago. All the way there, I was pistol whooped. And they were on the phone with my dad and trying to get money, and it was trying to get like 200 some thousand, you know. And they knew exactly how much I had. Well, that was that was the getter about a dope game. You don't know, you don't trust nobody. Mm -hmm. You can't trust nobody. Even the people that you're dealing with, the same people came back to try to rob me. Mm -hmm. They took me on the side of Lake Michigan, put their shotgun to my head, and still, I wouldn't give them, the money. I didn't tell them where my money was at. Isn't that, that's the insaneness of it. Yeah. The greed, I would not give them my money. I told them I didn't have that kind of money. I told them it wasn't my money. And so they put me back in the truck and took me to Chicago. And you know, right when we were getting off on 56 and Ada, they threw me out of the truck. <clears throat> and I was, at, well, this is at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning. As they threw me out the truck, lo and behold, here comes a cop driving by. I'm no shirt, I'm beat up on 56 and Ada. 10 o'clock in the morning, there's nobody out. And I'm sitting there bleeding. <laughs> he makes a U-turn, asked me what was going on, and kind of told him what happened, and that's where everything, yeah. And even after that, though, just continued. I, <laughs> I continued. Yeah. So, was that the first time that you ever, you know what I mean, experienced that? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, and after that, I was just made me more aware of everything and put me on guard of everybody. Mm -hmm. I didn't trust nobody. Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. <laughs> so, would you uh, would you say it was some people here in South Bend or some other people from out of town? That might have did that, you know. Both, 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 both. And I'm gonna tell you something. This is the one crazy part about it. One of the guys I see at church, I seen him at church. I, I, he recognized me, and I recognized him. And I seen him at church, mm -hmm. and he came up to me, and pretty much kind of apologized to me, but didn't because he was with his family and I was with mine. But we kind of knew what we, he, we were talking about. Mm -hmm. My heart dropped when I seen him. I couldn't, I, I, won't, rec I won't forget because he had a tattoo right here of a Playboy bunny. I'll never, I'll never forget, that's what always stuck out in my mind. And lo and behold, I see him at church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, was you, in a gang? No. At a particular time? Or you just no, I was, I was never in no gang. I didn't never affiliate with no gang. A lot of my other family members, you know, whatever they did, a lot of people in my family. But 
not a lot, I won't say a lot, but there's some, but friends, they associate with, with you know, but not me. Mm -hmm. It was always more of the hierarchy of people yeah. that I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, when did you decide to get out of that environment? <sighs> When I lost, well, when I pretty much lost everything. I didn't really, I, you know, I didn't even fight for nothing. I could have fought for my building. I could have fought for some of my property. But I just got tired of being tired and I, I literally walked away. Mm -hmm. Met somebody, well, she was in my life and we stayed in a $300 apartment with mold in it. Stayed there for a year, rehabbed myself. It was crazy, mm -hmm. and I just went through the DTs, I went through the loneliness, just went through it all. People thought I moved. Mm -hmm. I was staying right down the street. So when, what, what year did you end up, you know what I mean, going to prison? Oh, uh -uh. a lot of my 20s, I, I, you know, that's, I started, my first time I went to prison, I was 18, while a lot of my friends were in college. I was going to prison for drugs, yep. possession charge. Okay. Did six months. My first time went to Indiana State Farm and did six months. I was 18 years old. And the judge told me, he says, you know, at this age right now, a lot of, he says, your friends are in college right now, going to college and you're going to prison. So, yeah, at 18, it was just after my 18th birthday. And that was the first time, how many times you end up going later on down in life? Mm. Three different times, three different times. I got sentenced to prison three different times. In and out of jail, I can't even count. But to prison itself, three different times. Mm -hmm. For the same issues? Yep, same issues, okay. drugs, okay. drugs, and five different prisons. Now, how was your experience in that? It was like I knew everybody there. I get there, and then you hear in the yard, Camarillo, Camarillo, and I'm like, okay, here we are. Yeah. And then, you know, when you got guards, you know, you're like, hey, you need anything? Well, I'm at a level five secure level. Security five level prison. My paperwork gets messed up, and you know my security guards like he's dealing with lifers. And so you know you need anything, you let me know, and I'm let them know what I needed. So it, it was just like wow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was it. It's just who you know. But you hear a lot of that, so you hear a lot of that. At night, though, mm -hmm. you know, you hear the what you hear, see on TV. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how was your brothers and sister? Was they good? You know what I mean? Kids, good adults, or was they in the same lifestyle? Well, same lifestyle, and they grew into it because they wanted to see their little, their big brother. Their big brother was doing this, their little big brother was doing that, and there, you know what? I was just like, hey, it's cool because, you know, it's uh, free, they're, they're free employees, you know? So it was just like here, you know? And so I, at my state of mind, it was like, let's keep the money tight. If they're gonna be doing drugs and selling drugs, I got mad because they were selling drugs for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I was like, if you're gonna be selling for something, you know, you're gonna be selling for me. So that was the crazy mentality of it. Mm -hmm. And so it was just, yeah. And my brother gets shot, I, my brother Raymond got shot in the face over drugs. They robbed him at 17, paralyzed him. And even after all that, even after the kidnappings, even after the shootings, still continued.